Good morning. morning. Welcome to Coffee with the Pastors. Oh, look at Andrew's morning. mug. <laughs> All right. I thought about using my big mug, but it says the best dad ever, and I didn't want to make Tim feel bad. Oh, oh wow. Well, that was very nice of you. I am rather plain Jane this morning. Yeah. <laughs> I've got my whole hum your mug. Yeah. Boy, we're just boring we're today. <laughs> <laughs> I did go back and forth between the Nightmare Before Christmas mug and my Winnie the Pooh mug. Ah, oh, we could have been twinsies. Uh, been. <laughs> Can you tell that Andrew also has a young daughter? <laughs> <laughs> well, we have Andrew Wanger with us this morning, who is at uh, pastor at the Springfield Congregation, Church of the Brethren in uh, Akron, Ohio, which an interesting connection. Uh, my grandfather, Paul Groff, was the pastor there. I, I, we think like somewhere in the 60s, 60s, 70s, somewhere in there. So so as it is in the brethren world, Andrew and I are connected in, you know, what's it, the seven, seven? The seven, um, uh, seven say? degrees of separation. Seven, yeah, so that's it. <laughs> seven degrees of separation. That's seven right. degrees from Alexander Mack, right? Mm. <laughs> I think we both got to see Alexander Mack when, um, at National Youth Conference, so I think that's, that's right. even that's <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he makes, he makes a pretty regular appearance, which is, which is good of him, seeing as how he's, you know, over 300 years old. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Well, welcome, Andrew. It's nice to have you on our Get to Nova Friday interview series. Thank you. You know, it just struck me. Um, the Akron Church, uh, Akron, Sp ay, 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 now I can't even say it. The Springfield <laughs> Church of the Brethren. Um, Somewhere around the 60s or so, I think it might have been a little bit later, um, they flipped the, um, the sanctuary. It used to point in a different direction on one side of the property. And then they needed, they needed a new space. So they built another sanctuary facing the other direction out the back of it. Mm -hmm. So your grandfather may have been in there around that time of transition because the 60s feels yeah. about right. It might have been a little later. So uh, what? Was it an L? No, it, it was a straight line. Like you could walk from one pulpit down the line, enter the next sanctuary, and then walk straight up the, into the other pulpit. Wow, that's wild. So and you they, could just decide, you know, today we're facing south. <laughs> <laughs> Turn all the pews. <laughs> Eventually they did tear that one down and replaced it with the Sunday school wing. But wow. uh, We've had a big dry spell, and I've noticed when I'm walking around where it used to be, um, you can see the brown lines in the grass where the earth's extra compacted because that was where the walls originally sat. Oh, interesting. Huh. That's now our peace yeah. card. Yeah. <laughs> Neat. Neat. Well, nice to have you with us today. I know you're an avid viewer of Coffee with the Pastors, so <laughs> you know the routine and the possible surprises that might be uh, mm. underway in here. But we'll begin, Andrew, with just a simple question, maybe, of just what is it about pastoral ministry that drew you in? What do you love about pastoral ministry? That's never an easy question. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> um, I mean, I have always been involved with ministry. I know there are people out there who are PKs, pastor's kids. I am a CK, I'm a camp kid. My mm -hmm. parents are, are the directors, have been the directors. They just finished their 29th summer at Camp Blue Diamond um, wow. in Middle District, uh, PA. So I've always been around ministry. It's just been a little different, maybe a little more ecological. Mm -hmm. um, focused um, a little more youth focused than, than some ministries have. Um, but I, I had a Jonah time in my life. I went to Elizabethtown. Yeah, nice. It's the best of the Brethren Colleges, as we all know. Oh, yeah. Bring my <laughs> so I went to Elizabethtown. I majored in religious studies. Absolutely fell in love with it. Um, and, but then I graduated and I'm like, I'm 21, 22, 22 at that point. I don't feel ready to go into seminary because in three years I'll be pastoring. And what can I, a 25 year old, hmm. say to people my parents' age and older? Nothing, <laughs> or at least that's what I thought. So I went and ended up working in a restaurant. 
Um, eventually, I was there for eight years, eventually became a manager in my fifth year. Um, it was kind of my Jonah time in the whale. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Like I was running, I was running from what I wanted to do. Um, but I still did it some, I worked at a UCC church as a youth minister. Um, but I had to get that up when I became a manager because my hours shot up to 60 a week and I couldn't do everything. Yeah. But I found when I became a manager, I was still finding ministry. We were, it was Hershey, Pennsylvania, and we were less than a mile from the medical center. Mm-hmm. Um, which is a major medical center for Pennsylvania. Yeah. yeah. And we ended up with people coming and going from that all the time, not to mention regulars. And if you ever go to a friendlies in the morning, it's a lot of older folks um, just coming in regularly. And I got to know them and I got to, to know what was going on in their lives. And I ended up, I would be praying with them some days. Mm-hmm. And I had, two especially whose both of their spouses were suffering from dementia and watching that progress over the years and as it got worse and I remember the day that this one woman died and her her husband who was a real regular we sat down and I, I instantly knew by that time I knew him. I knew Bill well enough to know exactly what happened. And we sat and cried together. And I was like, I get it, God, you're pulling me back to finding ministry. Like, well, it doesn't matter where I go. You're finding people that mean that you need me to talk to and putting them in my path. So that's when I, I officially, sent in my application to, to Lancaster Theological um, to enter into their MDiv program and put my resignation in at Friendly's. Um, it, I, I, I just find anytime I make a plan, God yanks me back into ministry somehow. And I never know how it's going to work. <laughs> God will find a way to yank me back into ministry. So... Wow. That's great. (laughs) Awesome. So drawn to and then pulled in. (laughs) Now the question is, you said it was friendly, so they weren't serving whale, right? So that it's not connection in that sense. Okay. No, no. (laughs) No, but if you ever worked in a restaurant like that, some days it feels like you're stuck in the belly of the whale. (laughs) I bet. I bet. (laughs) So now from a Hershey, Pennsylvania, you're out in Ohio, Springfield. What are some of the exciting things happening there? So you've been there less time less than we've been, been here at Oakton, like nine months or so. Yeah. Right? So it'll be a year on um, the very first Sunday of September, or, um, November. I started with the Christian New Year, which was kind of a great way to start off. Yeah, um, yeah definitely. It meant that we had to shrink down the amount of time from the call to the actual sitting in. So we had the rush getting a house and everything. Oh my, um, my. <laughs> so, so Akron is a lot like a lot of other Rust Belt cities. You know, this was the center of the tire industry for decades. It, mm-hmm. You drive through, especially the area of Akron that we're closest to, it's these giant factories of Firestone and Goodyear. Huh. We, it's still the corporate headquarters, but of course they're not making rubber. On the upside, the city doesn't smell like burnt rubber all the time. <laughs> but it means we have a lot of these, these large housing tracks that once were factory workers. I have a lot of, especially the older folks in the congregation who were involved in either directly with these companies or with companies that served them. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But the companies move production out, so you you end up with the Rust Belt issues. Um, you know, declining wages, all those, I would say, fun things, but they're not fun. Uh, yeah. 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 So looking out towards our community around us um, and seeing how we can particularly serve them. We have a number of members who live rather close, but we have a lot of a lot of the membership kind of live out and around. 
Um, so we're the Springfield Church of the Brethren because that's the neighborhood we're in. We're in the side of Springfield neighborhood near another neighborhood named Ellet um, and right at the edge of a small town called Mogador. Okay. Um, but you, you walk anywhere from our thing and you get these, these houses that were all built back in the 50s or so when the area was booming. Mm -hmm. But there's not that same kind of money coming in. So how can we serve them? How can we help them? Um, so we have been doing things like, uh, I can't think of what it's called all of a sudden. Uh, the back to school blast, which is every year until now has been a huge fair on the side of our property. We give out bags full of, like if you're going into second grade, you come in and say, I'm going into second grade. We've been in contact with the local elementary school. We know what they need to go into second grade and we got a bag ready for you. Awesome. Cool. And we have hot dogs and games and a dunk tank and all those kinds of things. I say this only a second hand because I haven't been here long enough. 2021. <laughs> We're having it, hopefully. I won't lock in yet. Yeah. No locking in on anything yet. Um, lost my train of thought. Oh, so we, we you know, serving our local kids. Uh, we have a, a thing called the Kids Closet where we get donations from members and from outside um, and we open the church on used to be one Saturday a week we're now opening it basically every Saturday but asking people to go online and make an appointment um, mm -hmm. inviting them in come fill these bags with clothes the only clothing that we limit are socks and underwear because we cannot keep those in stock and you don't accept used donations of either yeah so. <laughs> the only things we limit we other than that it's like come in fill your bags so looking the ways that we can support our, our local community awesome. we had a few other things that we were thinking of doing kind of in the works planning but we kind of set a lot of those on hold as sure. dealing with the pandemic like every other church yeah yeah so, that time will come that time will come and we're we're starting some new trying some new things. We we had a hymn sing this last Saturday. I would be doing it again this next week Saturday. However, because of the way the schedule works, I'm on vacation for after this is my last Sunday preaching, and then I'm on vacation for two weeks. But we're going to jump back into that, and I think we're I might be trying to do more outreach, get more of the community coming into that now that we kind of have the the beta test done. That's right. It, it, it takes a it takes a little beta test, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. to know it takes a little beta test. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, this might be the moment we've all been waiting for. I think it's that time. <laughs> Ready? Okay. The pop quiz that that Andrew had no idea was coming. <laughs> the mildly heretical part of talking with the pastor. Yes, where we give you a theological term that is real. <laughs> or we made it up or should be real or should be real and and say you have a theological education you can define this word and we're not real familiar with lancaster theologicals education so this is yeah. a test for you. A, yeah, this you're is a representing test. i was in the 192nd class of lancaster theological we've been doing this a long time <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, you'll have, you'll have to pull out of the recesses then from those 192 you said, <laughs> yes. years um, to, to get, get at the depth of this word that we're going to give you. So your word to define, Andrew, is egaliturgy. Or egaliturgy? Or egaliturgy. You know, it kind of depends on if you're if you're defining it, you know, you're translating it from which language, how, <laughs> how you pronounce it. So, so uh, e egal, we know that's that's the word for like egality, um, mm -hmm. equalness. It's it's the French. It comes from the French and the Latin. You know, to be equal. And of course, liturgy is, well, it's the work of the people for God, basically. You know that that's, you know, we we brethren, we don't have a we're not a very liturgical people. So we often kind of use the word to describe all the bits of the worship that aren't hymns or the sermon or the scripture. So, you know, call to worship, all that fun stuff. 
So it's the equality of all liturgy. Whoa. When I tried it out, it doesn't work especially well. Because, you know, usually when you do a call to worship, you have the leader and you have the people. Uh -huh. You know, I say this and then you repeat that back to me. But if we do it all equally, it just kind of means we all just kind of do what we need together mm -hmm. at the same time. And of course, all the things are the same. So the call to worship is leveled the same as the benediction. So it just kind of ends up being kind of one rambling thing and people get <laughs> lost. And by the end of it, it's just trailing off in some inane direction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you would not be a proponent of ecoliturgy or egalaturgy. I, I wouldn't be a proponent of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's the kind of thing that you do when you know your sermon is not going to be great that week. <laughs> and you're really struggling to make it there. So you put in some egalitarianism. I don't know if I like that pronunciation yet. We'll work on it. <laughs> <laughs> you put well, that we're in. We're going to have to put the spelling at the bottom of this one. <laughs> yeah. You put it in there because you kind of wanted to just, you know, if the, the liturgy is so bad that it's just kind of fizzling out at the end, people aren't going to remember how bad your sermon is. That's oh, very true. They're just going to remember how bad the liturgy was. Very true. <laughs> I think he's got something against unison prayers. What do you think? <laughs> Only if they try a lot Unison prayers are different because someone has already taken charge and written out what the prayer is. That's true. Okay. It's like okay. having that, that time where you say, you know, in all those prayers, we now lift silently from our hearts. Except we don't <laughs> lift it all silently out. We all talk about it and just let people go until they're done. Hey, hey that's Pentecost, right? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe Pentecost was the first and only really positive example <laughs> of Galatrix. <laughs> you know, I, the modern proponent is St. Dumbledore. Oh. Which if you read through the Harry Potter books, oh. you know, when he leads music, that's the style he approaches the music. Oh. Now it's a little different in that he still gives them the words, but everyone gets to sing their own tune at their own speed that they want. And it's not like <laughs> That, so that's that's what's happening during the uh, Hogwarts um, school song. Yes. Yeah. That is a that is a version of it, a little more controlled, which mm -hmm. is usually the way we have to go these days. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, well done. I well think that's, done. That's an A plus. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was nice chatting with you. Thanks for playing along. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Blessings on you and uh, and your church in Ohio and. We'll see you around the Brethren's Theater, I'm sure. In 2025. Hey. <laughs> you know, if we see each other at the next annual conference, that's um, when we do it in Michigan, I will meet you guys for an in-person coffee at the Lord of the Rings coffee shop. Yes. You got it. Deal. We'll see you there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye.